Today we're going to do string quartets, and I'm making this music available for other people to do whatever they want with. It's just a short little piece that I was writing kind of to demonstrate Abbey Road 2. It makes use of shorts and longs together. It's, um, you know, a piece that I already posted just with some audio, but now it's going to be part of a conversation. And uh, we're going to post the music, the MIDI, and I'll post my Studio One session or project or song profile, whatever it's called, to VI Control, Virtual Instrument Control, a forum that has got a lot of enthusiasts for virtual instruments. And it goes like this, and I've made a couple minor changes since I posted the last version. I started with CSSS. CSSS, yeah, CSSS, and it's, um, you'll see the articulation switch up here for the cello. Now it's moving on to the next uh, uh, sample library. You'll see a couple times a notation. If I moved the notes a little bit off the beat, it'll try to put 32nd, 64th notes in and things like that. And it does. I didn't even add a key signature, so I'm not entirely enthralled with my F. With, well, what's that? That's an A flat, E flat, B flat. I guess this probably is right, but I could have put a key signature in there. I wasn't even paying attention to the key signature until just this second because I was watching for other things. That was a stupid thing to say. What composer doesn't know his key signature? Um, yeah, this was done pretty quickly. And um, then, so what I'm going to do is comment on how, uh, what you might want to pay attention to as you're, if you decide to make your own mock-up. Like, little sections like that, and at this section here, You know, the phrase that sticks out for me that has been mentioned a few times is the idea of watching each other's elbows or, you know, paying attention to each other's elbows, that the string players in a real room in a real setting are going to watch each other and try to stick with each other timing-wise. And um, that's, that's what we're kind of going for here. And it's little moments like that where I had to kind of finesse things just a touch. Um, in fact, with, with CSSS, you can see these are way ahead of the beat. These short notes are right on time. That one's a little ahead of the beat. And this doesn't have to do with MIDI pre-delay. It has to do with the way longs and shorts are in that lob library. And, um, and what tempo it is, and uh, which legato speed the velocity is using. And, um, you know, there's a number of things that each library is going to have idiomatic or idiosyncratic to the library about how to perform it and how to get the result that gets that sound. Um, and what we're going to do just real quickly here is break it down and just listen to a couple of the parts. That's the viola. You can hear that little shift from the short to the long articulation. Doesn't quite sound like a real player would have played it. And you can see... Um, I was switching, it might be hard to read on some screens, but spiccato, staccatissimo, then spiccato, staccato, spiccato, staccatissimo again. So each of these notes is changing articulation from note to note, and that's done uh, with these controls over here. I do use sforzato in one of them. Sforzando is what uh, Babylon waves. So I'm using the articulation assistant from um, Babylon Waves. Sound Variations, I guess, is what it's called in Studio One. Anyway. 
That little bit of variation there is what makes a performance like this start to come alive. The fact that I'm switching from shorts, sh switching around the shorts. And that's part of the exercise is that it's not just pick spagato, run it through a instrument and call it a day. You kind of have to do a lot of articulation switching to get. You have to pay attention to velocity. Actually, the velocity doesn't change. It's really just the uh, articulation, right? But then as soon as that long starts, you can hear it's not quite as organic as it could be. That's okay it, with me. I mean, that's sample. That's working with samples. Um, there might be ways to cheat that and layer, but you get the idea. And you can hear that's going to be the where the modulation is coming into play. And these were all done in the mix mic. You could play with different mics, use the close mics, the main, the room, and different reverbs. So let's just play the three longs. <clears throat> I think it's these three. And you can hear, I intentionally have the violin one going up at a different time than the cello and viola. So they're changing notes at different times. That may be a choice you don't want to make. Maybe you want to make them all change at the same time. You can hear that the violin is changing much earlier than the viola and the cello. Uh, but I think when you get the violin two, it was the violin two's turn to do kind of a lead, passing the phrase around, or the... I liked that cascade of articulation timings, and that's a choice that I made. Um, I could try it a different way and see if I like it better. Um, but that's part of the idea is that to take a piece like this, you kind of want to try to make them sound like they're playing together, even if it means moving them off the beat. And that has nothing to do with a tempo map. You can also make the performance feel more alive and more musical by using a tempo map. This one doesn't use a tempo map. It's strictly at 100. And I'm only using the variable of getting them to try to play together at 100. You could go further and put, um retardandos and accelerandos, you know, or just change tempo from bar to bar if you want as well. But um, at first I would try to get them to play together and then I'd mess with tempo changes because I'm not scoring to picture. Uh, you might want to do it in reverse. It's up to you. I also found CSS pretty easy to work with because it is so consistent. It's so easy to use because of its consistency. And that even w w because it's consistent allowed me to play with any sort of musicality that I wanted. It's a little like clockwork, but I think that it kind of accurately re represents what a pretty decent quartet would perform this as, as a mock-up. Sorry, you can't see all the parts again. And, um, we can go through each of the parts uh, individually relative to the different instrument um, libraries in a bit. But next, let's listen to the MSS uh, mo Modern Scoring Strings version. Now, this uses a viola from LASS, LA Scoring Strings. And um, so I, I, I used a different microphone position in this version than I posted in the previous video that I, that I had up. 
I switched over to the close position and I'm using the fast haul. And um, let's hear how this one sounds. It's not as wet and it's got a different character and quality. I had to load it up, it looks like. Now, one thing I was doing there was trying to make it sound like CSS. I wasn't trying to let it sound like MSS, and I probably should have, all things considered, looking back. So it might be worth revisiting this and, and trying to just let it be modern scoring strings rather than modern scoring strings trying to sound like C cinematic studio strings. But they also have four different lengths, kind of different articulation techniques, and um, uh, it, it kind of translates into length uh, when you're listening to the samples. So you, you go to the sound variations, um, you know, articulation switching, and we've got spiccato, staccatissimo again, spiccato, and then this one's marcato with uh, a staccato overlay, then spiccato and spiccato again. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, spiccato and spiccato again. I guess we didn't need this one here. So you can hear that basically a lot. Um, I think the staccatissimo just has a different character. And, you know, when you're doing this stuff, you sort of, you have to kind of suspend adherence to the techniques that a live player would be using. Um, I understand that spiccato is a bounce and staccato is not a bounce. The bow stays on the string. I understand that about techniques, but when you're trying to use samples, you've only got so many choices. And if you're trying to express something musically, you kind of just have to use what you've got and it's a limited palette. So you try to get as expressive as you can with that limited palette. So you just, I'm, I'm moving around these and basically treating them as different lengths of notes, for better or for worse, right? And you can hear that resonating marcato kind of linger past here, whether it would have or not. Maybe the string would have been damped, dampened by the next note, but you can hear it linger across. And it just fades into the background. I mean, I could probably take the release trigger off of it. No, nope, it doesn't help. Anyway, those are little things that you you could get really micro editing about. If you wanted to stop that, you could record it to a separate track and audio edit that overlap of the tail of the note. But then we're getting into really, really micro uh, editing, which in context is uh, probably one of the lesser, um, you know, errors or, or things to think about and worry about when you're really just getting a, a view of the whole piece. So immediately I'm thinking, you know, it sounds like a good viola. It does sound a little different from the other modern scoring strings, just a touch. So I have it in the back of my mind now that it's hard for me to make that viola fit in with the other modern scoring strings. I tried eight different ways and I was never, I still am not quite super duper duper happy with it, but it's, it's fine because it's a good viola, at least in this lower register. Another thing you want to think about is whether or not you're doing random or linear um, round robins, because sometimes the round robins are going to sound different from playback to playback if you've got it on random like I do. And I found um, that kind of when the library isn't edited super tightly, you can see viola, I did switch to linear. When the when the library isn't edited, edited, edited super tightly, where every sample is peaking at the exact same moment, uh, number of milliseconds after the sample uh, audio starts, you want to move them in, in time earlier or later. It looks like all of these are pretty much quantized, but these two I, I move just a touch apart. This one's early. Even though I've got look ahead on, and this library tries to keep things right on time no matter where you are in time, 
you can see I've done some editing again to do that kind of looking over your elbows, looking at the other player's elbows. In some cases, here I did a little bit of um, retardando almost just in the one part. The others come in on the beat, but this one kind of slows down here and then it does this transition late and tries to do a martelle into a legato. And part of it is just getting all of the samples um, that you hope triggered at the right time because of they had a particular timing when you haven't played for a while it all resets and you start from the beginning and they go in a particular sequence and the one that's a little earlier or later is the one that's going to land at that moment you move that one a little bit earlier or later on your sequence and then you get the performance you want this up a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. It doesn't quite get as sharp as this cello did. I'm still focusing on the first part of the piece. It's just not quite as sharp. one I like better but um, I'll stop editing and and move on to the Abbey Road 2. I think I wanted to point out though this little section here how it sounds in modern scoring strings I just did it slightly differently so there's not that same cascade that I did in CSSS this time it kind of they all kind of switch together if we mute the violin too because all three of those sounded so nice together. I just let this sort of fall down and fall into their pocket, so to speak. And you've got some expressions sometimes, mostly it's modulation that I work with. I'll draw I'll I'll draw it in when I need to kind of uh, emphasize an attack like here and here or play it in uh, with a controller when I'm kind of adjusting it and it just sort of feels natural. Sometimes it, it works to use the mouse and sometimes it works to use the continuous controller, MIDI controller. Now, um, let's look at Abbey Road. Suppose I should show you which mic I was using. I did, um, I am taking advantage of one portamento transition. So this is the professional version. Um, and this is just starting with mix one. But um, we can hear it with different mixes.
And uh, I see two notes here. There might be a couple things to look out for. Hmm. The only way that I could get this sounding exactly the way I wanted, I ended up re-triggering a note to portamento down into. So this is a performance legato because I didn't like the portamentos, be, they have a note attack that's very gentle and you can't change it, but the performance legatos are longs that you can layer shorts on top of. So if the velocity is high, it'll layer a little bit of a short attack, I think, or at least it'll sound like a nice strong attack. And then it can be a long, effectively. I could have done a long, but I didn't put any longs in my patch. One of the nice things about AR2 and the whole Spitfire player is you can click the pencil and build whatever patches you want out of all of the longs and shorts available. So I only wanted, um, I wanted to try to limit myself to eight articulations. Um, four shorts, I guess there's five shorts. There's a marcato and a brush, staccato, spiccato, and spiccatissimo. And then the slurred legato, the portamento, and the, just the performance legato that we mentioned. And so I didn't add another long. It would have been a second page. And boy, that's just too much for my brain. No, just kidding. Um, the thing here was I needed to re-articulate a note to portamento down from. I, I didn't need to, but that was a choice that I made so that I could get the legato down without disrupting the attack of that note. And you can hear it re-attacked out, out of context if you're paying attention, but it doesn't sound too much unlike it might sound with, if a player were playing it. Kind of sounds like a little bobble, but in context, I don't think people would have noticed that that's what, why it was doing that. And it's totally worth it to me to get this note, this B flat, very strong, da, 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 which I am only getting because I happen to be using performance legato, which I believe is having an overlay of a short. At least that's what they've done there. Performance legatos. Um, you can see I moved that one just a tiny bit later. That one just a tiny bit earlier. I was doing really small changes with tempo. Yeah, this one's just a little bit earlier. Um, this one also has that um, retardando in these shorts and letting this kind of fall into the pocket. I guess it was right on time, but the, sp the short before it is very short. And I started the performance legato right there and let that velocity probably be fairly high. I guess it's not too high. This is the violin too. It kind of has to be, it ends up sounding very gentle, doesn't it? Um, you know, maybe I could keep working on that. Um, but I remember... Uh, it, it being a little, it being tricky to get these two to feel like they were playing together. Sounds better when I start it later. When I start further back, it seems like the timing changes. It's probably why I put it the way it is. And then um, just the three that are changing. Again, a little bit of a cascade. This one leads the group again. So it, it pretty much feels like they're playing together. You could you can have a different opinion or a different approach to how to make that sound even better. Interesting. 
interesting. There is an overlap, but it is a little, it is quite a bit later. I wonder why I did that. Hmm. Sometimes it sounds more on time than others. I wonder if there's two round robins there. No round robins options. Don't know. Sometimes it sounds more on time than others. There it is. It's a string quartet kind of demo piece to demo different packages. It has a lot of shorts because I think a lot of different packages have nice shorts. It lets you hear the reverb. and um, But it combines them with little short connected phrases uh, that kind of let you hear how they can sound together and how they can weave in and out of each other and the shorts exercise as many shorts as you can get out of the package out of the sample library so i'll make these available and um, enjoy i hope we get some cool different sounding mock-ups i have uh, berlin first chairs that i'm going to try to attempt if i get it some time and i wanted to try uh, a hodgepodge of various packages that you know just were random and I also wanted to try um, Tableau from the Sign Orchestral Tools Tableau from Maxime Luft and, uh, you know, see how that sounded. All right. Well, enjoy. Take care. And we'll see you at the next one.